Hey everyone, welcome to my home studio. Now you're not gonna see some dramatic B-roll or anything like that, but just to let you know, I'm using my Canon M50 just with the kit lens and this little doohickey, this is the Rode Wireless Go 2, which I'll be reviewing very soon. I figured I'd let you guys hear it for yourselves. Let me show you around. So this is the view that you guys see in the background that's always blurred out. Uh, we'll go there in a second. And then I have my main setup here. Then I've got some other stuff here. And we don't want to look too closely here. Ah! <laughs> That's my storage area. Unfortunately, down here, I am in the basement. There's not a lot of storage. I still got to organize it. Got some amps there, cajon. Obviously, in case it's not obvious, I love my music. I used to play in a band and I've thought about uh, taking it up again. So here is where I keep all my equipment that I use pretty often. So I no longer have any of my L lenses. Used to have a 70 to 200, 100 to 400, but I sold those years ago. Basically gave up photography for a few years, but uh, that's for another day. <laughs> but I still have some Canon lenses, like I have the EFS 24 millimeter here. Nice little budget lens. Not the sharpest in the world, but it does a decent job. That's my Sony 50 millimeter. We got the Canon Nifty 50. Love that lens. I really like the 50 millimeter and 35. These are extension tubes. I use these for macro. Basically you just connect it. It works like an adapter and it magnifies your lens. Another Canon mount lens, the Sigma 17 to 50 2.8. Nice lens, great optics, but very noisy motor. It has stabilization, but better for pictures than for video, unless you're doing video that doesn't require sound. This is the original Tamron 28 to 75. Unfortunately, it suffers from back focusing and I really can't use it. It's not very reliable. I really love this lens, really good optics and the Canon EFS 55 to 250. Then I have the Helios 44-2 there. Then I have my antique collection. We've got one generation of a Kodak Brownie. This one is from 1914, I believe. It's actually written, yeah, 1914. Pinhole camera, got a Kodak Dual Flex. This one, Ansco Sure Flash. I'd love to see if any of these work still. Also have an old Yashica film camera. And at the back, just a point and shoot Pentax. This was the first video camera that I purchased for myself. That's a Canon ZR70. It takes mini DV tapes and it has a Firewire port. Could you believe it? The thing with Canon, they've always, always loved this flip screen. Check out that beauty. <laughs> oh, the battery's still on there. That's probably dead. It still kind of works, but not really. This is a Canon Vixia RF, HRF20. Ooh, it's dusty. Gotta do some dusting here, folks. So I got this video camera when I started getting into videography and I quickly learned that um, camcorders suck. <laughs> Basically down here, it just stands my gimbal, tripods. Here, just a bunch of stuff, accessories, handles, lens caps filters, hoods. And then I also have my charging station down here. So everything, all my batteries, all my chargers are here, always at the same place. I have a system. When it needs charging, it goes up here. When it's charged, it's down here. <laughs> it works for me. One of my favorite photos I took from the zoo, I got it uh, on canvas. It's the ever so great Hendrix. More drum stuff. Annika Nilis, German drummer, Maytel Cohen over there. Uh, this is my little test subject sometimes. <laughs> and some Remo drum heads signed by Tony Royster Jr. and Will Kennedy. And over here really is just storage. I've got some more antique stuff there. A Crown Graphics camera. I don't know if it actually works. One of these days I'm going to find out. My old 40D. Hey, check this out. This is my original 50mm 1.8. As you can see, it's kaput. One day I was trying to use it and I heard this weird mechanical sound, <laughs> like it was transforming and it literally popped out. Not out where it fell, but uh, I ended up ripping it open just because I was curious. So there's nothing in there except for the little ribbon cable there. And then the rest, you see here, you see the lens there and the circuit boards and stuff. That's uh, pretty much what a lens looks like inside. Pretty cool. 
And then my hat collection. Uh, this is a small portion of them. I love wearing my hats. For background lights, these are, what are these? <laughs> For background lights, I use the newer 660 Pros. These are the RGB version. They did come with soft boxes, but I'm not too thrilled about them. They're okay, but you can't really tilt it. Like, see how you can tilt it? When you put the soft box on, it, it gets in the way of tilting it. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, that to review very soon too. And then my main key light also is from newer. Now that light, it was a steal. It was just the light itself. It was like a little over a hundred bucks. And then when I went to look at it again, maybe a few weeks later, there was a new version that came out, which was more powerful. Now, eventually I want to clamp this to the desk as well. Now these monitor arms, they're pretty decent. They're more on the budget side. They're Juan, Juano, I think, <laughs> from Amazon. Uh, all this stuff I'll link in the description below if you're interested. And then I have a second one that holds up my widescreen monitor. I've got a simple LED here as a fill light. And I've got some desk mount stands for them from Dasney. Dasney? I don't know what they're called. Oh, and really cool, I just picked up this cage for the A7C where it gives you a nice grip. Definitely a review to come on that. As I said before, this is my 35 1.8 for Sony. Uh, I use this lens almost religiously, especially for video, especially for my YouTube videos and other projects that I do. I tend to use 35 and 50 quite a bit. I don't know if I mentioned the soft box. This is also from newer. It's a 36 inch. In terms of the monitors, this is a Asus ProArt 24 inch. And I mainly use this for, you know, if I need color correction done or if I'm doing photo editing, video editing, and I need to make sure my colors are accurate. This one is the MSI Optics. It's a 34 inch curved widescreen, 21 by nine aspect ratio. I think the refresh rate is a hundred. I'm not much of a gamer. I do game every now and then. I used to be a heavy gamer when I was younger, but I mainly got this for editing. When I edit on here, I have enough real estate that it's super comfortable and no need for a second monitor unless I'm color correcting. So that's what that's for. Down here, this little thing, this is a stream deck that I actually started using for productivity actually for both photo editing, video editing, work laptop here, nothing exciting. I do have an old MacBook that my brother lent me. Unfortunately, it's kind of old, this MacBook. We're gonna get the newer M1 or M2 Max. And nothing fancy here, just a simple Corsair keyboard and mouse. Pretty simple setup if I back off here. And sorry if you hear the furnace, because I hear it uh, come on. This is the Rode Pod mic. Uh, I will be reviewing this as well, along with the Rode PSA-1, I think, the arm, which is great because it holds heavy mics and the Rode Pod mic. It's a great budget mic, but it is a little heavy, so you need a decent arm. And then this little guy is the Mayano Ferry. Uh, review to come on this. I've had this for a while that I need to review, uh, but I mainly use this for work and I have this on an arm too because my computer is uh, down on my desk there. So if I were to put the mic here, it's susceptible to vibrations and uh, I personally like it on the arm. And I run it through this Focusrite 8i6, I believe it is. Over here is kind of my mini music area. This is a Zoom R16. I was using this for like band practice and band recordings at one point, but it served me well where I can use it for gigs when I have events and I can just get their audio out, plug that in. Although it's kind of old now and the preamps aren't that great, been looking to update that, that's for sure. And I have a Axiom 49 key MIDI keyboard that I use you know, if I'm making beats or any type of music, which I'm eagerly waiting to do. As for my computer, I'm on a Ryzen 5800X and yes, I'm on the floor <laughs> trying to do this. Asus Rogue Strix 570 board, motherboard, and an RTX 3060 Ti for the graphics card. And for memory, no RGB on that, just standard Flarex Ryzen RAM, 32 gigabytes worth. 
Hopefully when I plan to get the 4000 series graphics cards that they'll be, they won't be overpriced like it was not too long ago. So as you can see, you know, a lot of the stuff I have, I've collected over the years, but I think this is more of a realistic YouTube studio tour. I don't really have much to show off. It's more about the value of the content I give you, sharing things that you find useful. So part of the reason why I wanted to do this vlog today was, yeah, to show you kind of where where the magic happens, so to speak. <laughs> but to actually show you too that I'm just a regular Joe, just like you, trying to make it on the YouTube space. This is my humble abode where I create content for you guys. I thought it'd be cool to kind of show my beginnings and as I grow to see how things will change. So I hope you enjoyed the little tour. Lastly, I did want to say I appreciate all of you and I've experienced some increased growth in the last few months. And uh, you know, every time I get a new subscriber, I still do a subscriber dance. <laughs> Just know that means a lot to me that the community is growing, we're starting to engage. And by the way, you've noticed the little shag 70s carpet. Yeah, that's gotta go. <laughs> uh, there's always something to pay for. I gotta get the roof done, pull this carpet. My son's got braces and that's friggin' expensive. So anyway, know that I appreciate you all and I'll see you when I see you.